right, 8th grade, I'm going to be real with you. Not everyone loves equations in point-slope form. Uh, a lot of people, they learn uh, y equals mx plus b. They learn slope-intercept form first, so they love it more. Uh, but during this video, hopefully you'll learn to appreciate and to use point-slope form. It can make things a lot quicker and a lot more painless. So get that name, date, and title, and let's get some notes. First note says that for linear functions, point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m, the slope, times the quantity of x minus x1. So that's what it looks like. But what does that all mean? Well, we know that x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. Hopefully these other ones look familiar from our slope equation. So we know that m is still the value of the slope. And x1 and y1 in the slope equation, those are just the x and y coordinates of a specific point, and that's still the, state, still the case. x1 and y1 could be any point on the line. They just have to be uh, a coordinate pair that go together on that line. Um, and so we can just plug those right in. But what you'll see is that if you see a specific equation written out in, um, in point slope form, like y minus 1 equals 5 times x plus 3, well, people are going to say, what's the point? Well, the x's go together, so that'd be positive 3, and the y's go together, and so that'd be negative 1. But what they're doing wrong there is they're ignoring the form. So the form says it's supposed to be y minus. So y w y1 is just positive 1. And over here, it's supposed to be x minus. And the only way to get x plus 3 if we're doing subtraction is if we're subtracting negative 3. So it's x minus negative 3. So it's just the opposite of what most people assume. So you have to be careful with that. And I'm going to show you how to be careful as we go through some problems. Why is uh, point slope form useful? Well. Just as before, if we have two points, we can calculate slope. That's our uh, slope equation, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the change in y over the change in x. But with slope-intercept form, we had to solve for the y-intercept by plugging in a point. Right now, we can just plug in a point, y, x1, y1, and we've got the form already written. You already got your equation. You already have your equation. So that's, that's useful, uh, and that's a lot quicker sometimes. So let's see what this looks like in practice. We have to find the equation of the following line in point slope form. So what do we like to do here? Well first we have to name uh, name two points we see on this line and again we're looking for specific points uh, that this line goes directly through. And it looks like we have this one, this looks like two to the right, the x is two, and it's one down from the x-axis. So this is two negative one, where else do we go through? It looks like this is back at negative 5, 1. Negative 5, 1. And so we already have two points. That means we can find the slope. We could plug it into the slope equation, and we'll show some like that later. But what I like to see is if you're seeing it on the graph, you can just tell me what is the change in y between these two points. The change in y is it goes down as it goes to the right. And how far are we going to the right? It goes down 2, but how far are we going to the right? We're going from negative 5 to 2. We're going 7 to the right, positive 7. So the slope right here, I can tell you, is the change in y, or delta y, over delta x. And what is that? That's just negative 2 sevenths. So we already have our slope. And I know that slope-intercept form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, in parentheses, that quantity. Do I have any points that I could plug in? I do. Let's just use this first point that we wrote. That's just a, a pair of x1, y1. So we'll plug it in with our slope. We'll say y minus, what's the y1 I'm choosing? It's 1. y minus 1 equals m, negative 2 over 7, negative 2 sevenths, times the quantity of x, my independent variable, minus x1, minus negative 5. Minus negative 5, if you play add ops, is just the same as x plus positive 5. So there we already have this equation in point slope form. So we're good to go. We use the graph to find our slope. We'll plug in a point where the variables are for x1, y1, and we're, we're already set. Um, so let's move on to another. This one says find the equation in point slope form for the line that passes through 7, negative 10, and negative 21, 2. Um, so we are going to use our slope equation in this case, and you know that I like you to do this to be careful. I'm going to do the same as we'll call this x1 to y1. And this is the second point, And we know that the independent variable comes first. x is first. So we have our slope equation, which is y2 minus y1. I write it all out to make sure I'm filling things in for the correct spots. x2 minus x1. 
and let's plug these in. Y2 is 2, Y1 is 7. So we've, oh, see, I wasn't paying attention. 2 minus Y1 is negative 10. So 2 minus negative 10 over X2, negative 21, minus X1, which is 7. So negative 21 minus 7. I'll play add ops on both these because I like to think of putting algebra tiles together. So if we have two positives and we add 10 positives, we have 12. And down here, if we play add ops, we have negative 21 tiles and negative 7 more. That's a total of 28 negatives. And we can simplify this because these are both divisible by 4. And we simplify to make easier numbers. So if we had to plug in some values, uh, we'd be dealing with smaller numbers to multiply. So we get 3 over negative 7, or negative 3 sevenths. You divide a negative and a positive, it doesn't matter which is which, um, it doesn't matter where that negative sign is, that value, negative 3 sevenths, is negative. So again, we're just going to write y2 minus y1. Oh, that's not what we're going to write. That would be a square calculating slope. For point slope form, hopefully you're getting this down, it's y minus y1 equals the quant m, the slope, times the quantity of x minus x1. And again, do we have all these variables that we need to plug in? We do. Y, my dependent variable, minus Y1, we said was negative 10. So if we're subtracting negative 10, again, that's Y plus 10, which is a little funky, equals, I'll make it negative 3 sevenths times X minus, what's X1? It's 7, so X minus 7. So there we have it. We have this equation as well. We're all good to go. Um, so hopefully you're seeing that's a little easier than having to solve for that b variable, for that b value, the, the y-intercept. So this can be quicker and useful. This last one says graph the following equation. y plus 17 equals 0 0.125, 125 thousandths, times x minus 30. Okay, so what's the first thing we know is we recognize, oh, this is point-slope form, and usually the parenthetical gives it away, or uh, addition or subtraction with, with each variable gives it away too. Um, but I know that this number in front of the parenthetical, that's my slope. So I can right away pick out my slope as 0.125. And because I paid attention and studied hard in seventh grade math and I had an, an awesome teacher, I know that's the same as 1 8. So this slope is 1 8. And what's the point? What's the point that we can plot right away? And this is where you have to be careful. We'll look at the x value and say, well, point slope form says x minus x1. So our x1 is 30. I know there's a negative sign there, but it's not a negative sign. It's x minus x1. We have the minus sign. What comes after? x1 is 30. What about y? It should be y minus y1. But if it's plus, that means we subtracted a negative. So it's the point we have is 30, negative 17. OK, so let's plot this bad boy. I have a slope, and I have a point, and I should be able to plot. I could plug in a different x value and solve for the y, but let's, let's find an easier way to do it. First I have to decide on a scale, and I can see that we're going to need to go beyond 10 for both of these. My x needs to get all the way to 30, um, but let's uh, expedite our process. Let's make it uh, a little bit quicker, and let's increase our x by uh, 4 at a time. You'll see why I chose that in a second. What do we want to increase our y by? Well, we can just increase that by 2 um, because we just need to get down to negative 17. So let's plot our point to start. And you're going to think this is weird, but 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. So this is 28, which means this is 32, which means 30 is right in between. So I know I'm going to go between these two lines, and I have to go down to negative 17. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 17. So we got this point right in between. And what I like to do is if I'm not on a specific you know, intersection of two of these uh, hash marks, I like to name this point just to be sure, because I've tried to make it clear, um, but I want my students and I want my teachers to know that's the point that I just plotted. 30, positive 30, negative 17 goes down. Now how do we do a slope of 1 8th? Well I know that means I go up 1 every time I go 8 to the right and I know that each hash mark every time I move a full unit to the right 
I go up one. So I'll go eight to the right and go up one. Now we know that going up one is going half between hash marks. So let's go eight to the right. One full unit would be between these two. And that would be, remember our scale is four. Two full units to the right, or a total of eight, because our scale is four would be between these last two hash marks. And to go up one, I'm just going to increase that next line, because the Y scale it goes every two. So I'll plot this line, I'll connect it to show all the combinations of X and Y values that would make this equation true. But I also, uh, maybe I should also label this other point. What's this point? Well, we said that it was 8 to the right of 30, so this would be 38. And that makes sense that it's right near 40. And how far did we go down? Well, we're not down 17, we're just down 16. So this is a pair of X and Y values that would also make this true. So there you go. This is a difficult scale and a difficult, weird one to plot, but I'm glad we did it together. I'm going to leave you with some ones that are a little more basic, and here they are. Find the equation of the line through negative 9, negative 1, and negative 4, 9. And these are not the instructions. And that's not even poor, correctly worded. So what you should do is... Uh, yeah. I'm just going to leave it. Find the equation of the line through negative 9, negative 1, and negative 4, 9. Do that in point slope form, and then graph the line for the equation y minus 4 equals negative 6 times the quantity of x plus 2. Best of luck. Practice that point slope form, and I'll see you.